All right, so first time unemployment claims in the U.S. are down this week after staying flat uh, the week before. New data from the Department of Labor shows there were 239,000 new jobless claims in the week ending June 24th. That's down 26,000 from the week before. So for more analysis of this, I want to bring in CBS News reporter Sarah Ewald Weiss. Make sense of the numbers for us. Can you break down these latest job numbers and what it means for the current state of the economy? Sure. Uh, when you see these initial jobless claims dropping, that's always a good sign. So last week, as you mentioned, there were 239,000 claims. That is down 26,000 from the previous week. But the four-week moving average was around 257,000. A lot of numbers here. That was a slight increase. So it's at the highest level for the four-week average since November 2021. And this comes after several weeks where jobless claims had remained up. But you know what? We are seeing them down today. Right now, more than 1.6 million people are receiving unemployment benefits. But at the same time, we've seen this labor market remain so strong in terms of jobs added month over month. People who are quitting their jobs um, are kind of back to pre-pandemic norms. And, you know, people who quit their jobs or are fired are getting new jobs quickly in terms of the labor market. So it's all over overall a, a good job market, a good labor force. Um, and these numbers today are also a good sign. Uh, we weren't seeing them continually tick up. All right. Um, so what about uh, growth numbers? They were released as well. Any big surprises? Yeah, also some good news here. Uh, this was an increase. GDP is actually revised up for the first quarter of the year by 0.7 percentage points from the previous estimate. They do these updates as they get more complete data. So growth for the first three months of the year was at an annual rate of 2 percent for the first quarter. Uh, this really increases, uh, reflects increases in consumer spending, in exports, in government spending, in non-residential fixed investments. So. Things are slowing down from the end of last year, but these are also still good signs. I'll quote one economist this morning, no recession here. No. OK, so this is good news. But the whole thing is that, uh, you know, the Fed wants to see inflation going down. It's not going to go down if we're all got great jobs and everything's, you know, rearing to go. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell says it may take a couple of years uh, before we get down, get core inflation down to the goal of 2 percent. I'm not surprised he said that because we don't seem to be budging. It, is there cause for concern, though, because... Yes, things are expensive, but it's not like things are so expensive that people aren't going on vacation, aren't buying that refrigerator that they wanted, and so on and so forth. Yeah, we're actually seeing a record number of people hitting the roads and the skies for the 4th of July weekend. Uh, but, you know, Powell made those remarks during a panel while traveling in Europe this week. Uh, he said he doesn't see us getting back down to the 2 percent target inflation goal until 2025. Uh, that's really not a surprise. His remarks do reflect what the projections were from the Federal Reserve at their meeting earlier this month. And we know if inflation, especially in the services sector, has been sticking around longer than they wanted. I think it's worth noting noting this just because in May, um, it, 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 until, it, it, they say it'll take until 2025, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to cut interest rates before then. Mm. Um, they're not going to cut them this year, uh, but they're going to look at the data, and we could see them start to cut rates next year as they get more information. Uh, another point mm. I'd like to make is that while inflation has been higher than comfortable, the United States actually has the lowest inflation rate right now of any G7 country, uh, so globally we're in a good space. So Powell also says that uh, more interest rate hikes could be coming and he kind of he didn't kind of poo poo the idea of back to back interest rate hikes. We got a bit of a break. And so we none of us should be surprised by him, you know, floating this idea. But how high could rates go by the end of 2023 if, you know, as you as you just said, we probably won't see a decline until next year. Yeah. So what he was speaking about was uh basically reiterating what the Fed has already been signaling, that we could see two more hikes this year. Most of the Fed committee members believe the rate will need to go up, and that median projection for the rate this year was 5.6 percent. It's currently between 5 percent and 5 and a quarter of a percentage point. I will note Powell did not take those consecutive rate hikes off the table, but he also did not signal that they've ruled out taking an every other approach. So we really do have to see what they do at this meeting coming up at the end of July and what they'll say about indications moving forward on what they plan to do to proceed.
Sarah Ewald-Weiss, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you.